Hello and welcome to this course on MATLAB programming for numerical computations. We are in week 11 of this course and this week we are going to start a new topic called partial differential equations. Most of you might be familiar with PDEs but we will recap a few things in the first two videos of this course. Thereafter in the last uh, couple of videos we are going to talk about how to solve PDEs using MATLAB. Okay? So, let us go and talk about what is the difference between ordinary differential equations and partial differential equations. Ordinary differential equations are equations where you have one single independent variable. That independent variable could be time or it could be spatial location. The spatial location could be z or it could be r if you are working in radial coordinates or it could be theta if again if you are working in polar coordinates. As against that, Partial differential equations are where you have two or more independent variables. For example, something varies both with time and location, you will have time and z as independent variable. If something varies across a two-dimensional sheet, for example, it, you are going to have uh, partial differential equations in x and y. Okay? So that is about the difference between ODEs and PDEs. Let us take a few quick examples. Okay? Now, we had covered rod conduction in the previous week. Okay? Rod conduction results in ordinary differential equation. The example that we took is we have a rod with one end at 100 degree Celsius, other end at 25 degree Celsius and it loses heat to the surroundings uh, which is proportional to or HAV T minus 25, that is the loss of heat. Okay? So, at steady state, we try to solve this, solve this problem. Okay? Uh, at steady state, the equation that we got was d square t by dz square this was the equation that, that we obtained. Now, let us consider the problem like this. Okay? We have this rod, one end is kept at 100 degree Celsius, the other end is kept at 25 degree Celsius, but initially this rod, entire rod was at 25 degree Celsius. It was at room temperature, then it was brought closer to a source of heat. Okay? Let us say that source of heat is some kind of a heater or for example, your computer gets heated and this is one of the fins uh, uh, in, in, in the cooling uh, module of that computer. Okay? So, as the computer chip has gotten heated to 100 degrees Celsius, uh, the rod is now starts, the temperature starts increasing. Okay? Now, that is a transient problem. The transient problem is going to look exactly like this, but you will have starting So, this is an example of a transient uh, uh, equation. Okay. Now, how does this equation look like? What we get is okay, we get an equation of this type. Sorry, it should not be D should be partial. Okay? So, now there is this variation in time and variation in space. Okay? What happens if a lot of time passes? Let us say one hour later you come back and look at this particular fin. What happens is that the temperature does not change with time anymore because it has reached steady state. So, dt by dt becomes 0 at steady state and your gamma is going to be nothing but beta by alpha. Okay? When that happens, you are going to get a steady state solution and that steady state solution is the solution to the original boundary value problem that you solved. Okay? But in transient, the temperature increases from uniformly 25 degrees throughout to 100 to 25 degrees Celsius as we have seen in the previous week. Okay? So, that is the example of rod conduction problem in uh, one dimension with things varying in time and space. Okay. Now, instead of a rod, let us say that the fin was a plate. Okay. Let us say it was a two-dimensional plate that looked, looked like this. So, what is going to happen is that the temperature is going to vary in both x and y direction. 
let's say this was a steady state problem the steady state problem is going to be the rod this is kept at 100 degrees celsius this is kept at 25 degrees celsius and this loses heat and this boundary loses heat okay in the domain the domain equations is going to be d square t equal to 0 this is called a laplace equation so the equation that you are going to have is okay so this is going to be the domain equations and then you will have the various boundaries okay so that's the example of conduction in a plate what if this was a transient conduction in plate you will have dt by dt you will have dt by dx and dt by dz so now you have three independent variable and you get pde in multiple independent variables as well okay so this is where the pdes originate from and how pdes are related to the ordinary differential equations okay now as scientists and engineers, there are a certain set of PDEs that we encounter most often, okay. The second order PDEs and first order PDEs are most common. The second order is because the largest d by uh, dt or d by dz term is or dx term is d square by dx square or d square by dx dy okay that is the reason this is second order pdes now these second order pdes are further classified as elliptic parabolic or hyperbolic okay so if b square minus 4 ac is going to be less than 0 it's called elliptic parabolic is if b square minus 4 ac is equal to 0 and hyperbolic is if b square minus 4ac is greater than 0 okay that is actual classification okay for example this problem that we had let's look at a was 1 c was 1 and b was 0 okay so a was 1 c was 1 b was 0 so b square minus 4 ac was okay so in other words elliptic problems are problems where you have boundary value problems in both x and y direction those are the type of elliptic problems okay let's look at this particular problem okay now sorry not this let's look at this particular problem okay so if we look at this we have d square t by dz square okay so that's our c we do not have d square t by dt square is not present so our a is 0 our b is 0 because we do not have dt d square t by dt dz okay and our c is going to be negative alpha if we take this on to the other side our c is going to be negative alpha okay so then what do we have we have b square minus 4 ac is equal to 0 so this is an example of parabolic ode okay most commonly we will encounter parabolic ODEs when we have a transient equation where there is diffusion type of a thing or a conduction type of a thing taking place okay so those, those are the example of parabolic ODEs example of hyperbolic ODEs is what is known as wave equation okay so let me come uh, uh, come to the next part okay now what is the example of wave equation and the wave equation you might have studied is something called utt equal to c square uxx okay what that what does that mean it means d square u by dt square minus c square d square u by dx square equal to 0 okay so the first order pds are something that are said to have hyperbolic characteristics okay technically speaking 
if these terms are not there, then whether it's elliptic, parabolic or hyperbolic PDEs does not matter because uh, elliptic, parabolic and hyperbolic are defined for second order PDEs. However, lot of researchers call first, or call first order PDEs as hyperbolic PDEs for the reason that I showed in the previous slide. Okay. So, this is the overall classification of PDEs as elliptic, parabolic, hyperbolic as well as first order PDEs. So let us take examples of typical PDEs of interest. The Laplace equation is written in terms of d square t equal to 0 or d square t by dx square plus d square t. Okay. This is the example of a Laplace equation. The wave equation is something that we have talked about earlier and that is d square uh, u by dt square This is the example of wave equation. The example of heat equation is dt This is the example of heat equation. Example of Poisson equation is d square t by dx square. equal to some function f. Okay? So, these are the typical PDEs of, of interest, interest to us. Okay? So, what I have covered in this particular lecture is to recap some of the things about classification of PDEs. The reason why I went over classification of PDEs is something that will get clear over the next few, ne next few lectures. Primarily, I have discussed classification of PDEs for very simple reason because elliptic, parabolic and hyperbolic PDEs are solved in various different ways. Okay? Uh, the approaches for solving these three PDEs are different and therefore, understanding about what these PDEs are is something that will be useful for you. Okay? So, with that, I come to the end of this lecture. In the next lecture, I am going to talk about general ways of solving partial differential equations. Thereafter, we will talk about specific solution techniques for specific type of problems. Okay? That is going to be our game plan in rest of this week. Thanks for watching this video and see you in the next video. Thanks and bye.